I'll be honest with you, I wasn't planning on doing a ninth exhibition of stupid people this week. I was expecting to do it next week, but then I went to Norwich and my dear dear friend said to me, I've got a story for you that'll fit in a video quite nicely, and it's so stupid we should definitely point and laugh at it. But then I thought, it's not big enough for one video, it's something we should laugh at, and I don't really want to wait a week to share this with you. So I thought, hmm, let's go find some more. To Discord! And there is always an abundance, because the lovely, lovely people on my server of Moistonia, become a patron and join, have happily provided. So welcome everyone, to the ninth exhibition of stupid people. Let's start with the one I got from Norwich. We do also, by the way, have a festive story. Don't worry, this is the Christmas season and we should of course, of course, be jolly about it. So back to Norwich. After having a wonderful time buying many, many things, including a sword, yes, I bought a sword. That's what I get for my friend says, we should start a sword collection. I say, hold my beer. So I buy a sword. He informed me that my old university has been up to its old shenanigans, and I thought, no, they wouldn't do something to top that of the sombrero of 2015, now would they? Oh boy was I wrong, and the sombrero thing. The National Union of Students decided, we're going to ban sombreros because it's cultural appropriation, something that is going to crop up later in this video today. So I went to Norwich went to the very Mexican restaurant that was in fact handing them out for free on campus, bought one and went for a little walk around campus. It was jolly good fun. This time, the university, not the NUS, decided to ban beef because they wanted to tackle climate change. Because of course, prohibiting it from being sold by the retailers on campus totally solves the problem of the beef existing in the first place. If your argument is to simply ban it so we don't import as much, might I suggest you speak to those who sell it on campus and have them approach local farmers to get the produce locally. You know, the whole local shop for local people? There's nothing for you here. That kind of mentality would solve you a lot of problems and also keep the money in the country as opposed to importing it, which is where a lot of the issues arise, not just the parping of them pesky, pesky cows. Well, this is true by the way, this entire thing is something the university had done. I know this because the NUS decided to have a vote on it, whether to enforce it and allow it to continue because the student union on campus are those that run all the shops and businesses on campus. So they had to decide whether or not they want to enforce it and they voted against it. 53% voting to overturn the ban with 36% voting to keep it. Notice a number of abstentions, yeah, they act, because they don't understand yo in its swag, which has understandably put a big smile on farmers' faces, because we can't have one university trying to tackle climate change by not eating the very animal that would just be killed somewhere else, and eaten somewhere else. It should also be pointed out, just by banning it from being sold on campus, I have to be the one to point this out to you, as someone that lived there for seven years. There is a co-op two minutes off campus, a Tesco five minutes off campus with a co-op behind it, an Aldi a ten minute walk off campus. There is a whole street of takeaways, many of whom sell beef, with the Della Casa pizza place being next to the co-op, which is two minutes off campus. You stopping it from being sold on campus doesn't stop it existing everywhere else. Okay? 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 Fantastic. UEA, you are Muppets. You're in the exhibition of stupid people. Weirdly, it's not the student union, which utterly surprised me. Congratulations. <laughs> next. So next I want to move on to cultural appropriation. I earlier mentioned it would crop up. Well, this time it will, shall, and in fact does. Courtesy of an Asian restaurant in New York City. Now this restaurant has recently closed down. Many accuse it of cultural appropriation because of the white owner being the one that markets Chinese cuisine. And this also leading to some believing that that is the reason it shut down because of cultural appropriation. Before we go into whether or not the reason for the business shutting down is cultural appropriation or not, which is more than likely the not that is, we have to ask ourselves the following. Is it cultural appropriation for somebody of a different race 
to cook cuisine from a country that is predominantly another race? The answer should always be no. It would be up there, although obviously not comparable because white people are, you know, just the supremacists of the world and need to be eradicated. It would be up there with a black man cooking a shepherd's pie, which is totally not their culture and they should stay in their own lane of fried chicken, watermelon and grape soda. I believe that's the correct combination, I can't remember. Do they take supplements? Now getting back on to Lucky Lee's being shut down, that's the name of the restaurant. I don't believe it was because of the accusations of cultural appropriation that were floating about long before it even opened. I think it is more than likely because the business just didn't make enough money regardless. Of course, optics will play a part, but people have to want to go there and it needs to be marketed right. Yes, many of the accusations will have affected it, but I don't believe it was the main reason. I did some digging and found out that the article references the owner as Ariel Haspel, who is known as a social media influencer. I took the liberty of looking up her Instagram, which I'll link below if you're interested, along with Lucky Lee's, which has the statement of how, why, and whatever it shut down. I did some digging and all I noticed was she's an incredibly healthy person who really enjoys her food to a certain quality. This business, Lucky These, that is, was the very first time Ariel Haspel had actually gone into the restaurant world, and it was supposed to offer diners a healthy Asian option. But Haspel didn't market Lucky These like that. In fact, she on the Lucky The Instagram and other places took shots at Chinese food as a whole, with it being deemed too oily or salty, and that they are, because she embraced the NBC News on this, the stereotype of dirty Chinese restaurants. She even removed monosodium glutamate, which some claim, despite the evidence to the contrary, triggers an allergy. Well, that's embarrassing. The counter to this is that it is believed Ariel Haspel was attempting to make food, Chinese-inspired food no less, for people with dietary restrictions, which is not really an offensive concept, but because she championed it as clean, while at the same time saying other Chinese restaurants make her feel icky, she ended up disrespecting the very cuisine she was trying to celebrate. She believed that they were complementing an incredibly important cuisine in a way that would cater to people that have those requirements. With her listening and learning, and believing that she could have made changes and continue, with her offering an apology saying shame on us for not being smarter about cultural sensitivities. I don't believe the business failed because of cultural appropriation on its own. The accusations, that is. I believe it failed because of a number of things which added up. But most importantly, it didn't make enough money. You can go out of your way to cater to people with many different dietary restrictions, but you should also cater to the majority of people. That way, you get everyone, but also show that you are able to adapt for those who require it, which would have been the smarter option. Have the oily pans for those who require the, what did you call it again? Icky food? Was that it? No, oily or salty, yes, yes. Congratulations, Ariel Haspel for attempting to create a restaurant and failing to cater for the majority which would have kept your business afloat had you not alienated your audience and, of course, allowed the accusations of cultural appropriation to continue without adequately dealing with them. You have a website that deals with over a million hits a month and you seem to make that successful, but you couldn't be bothered to what? Deal with the optics? Oh well, you can't win them all, and you certainly weren't going to win anything in New York City. A white woman doing something out of her colour that isn't apologising? How dare she? Next. Okay, next we're going to go to Gab. Do you remember Gab? Does anyone remember Gab? Hell, I have a Gab account. I post my videos in the politics area. Those that are politically motivated and charged and, of course, relevant to that particular tab. It updated its site not so long ago and I got confused by it. Gab was created as a way for those who championed free speech initially to be able to then use it like Twitter so they could communicate on a regular basis with their supporters, who themselves grew disillusioned with Twitter's authoritarian attitudes towards free speech. Well, as time has gone by, the supposed good that Gab was, even after many obstacles and hurdles, including losing its ability to raise money, its ability to have an app on the app stores, 
the site's still going. Torber still exists. Somehow, and I find this quite amusing, he is himself using the Get On Gab Twitter page, which is verified to try and get more people on Gab. A site which, I will argue, is dying. It's dying for a number of reasons. One, it's understandable that many would not want to use it, considering it is predominantly used by a particular type of people. Some will try to make it more centre-grounded, but it isn't because it's not in favour of free speech, much like Twitter. The more recent arguments that have concerned Gab and gotten them into a considerable amount of trouble on Twitter concern the adult industry, where it takes an almost Christian stance, believing that Christianity is about to have a revival. So we must, of course, get ahead of the trend and, you know, stamp our foot down because adult work is bad, okay? It's just wrong. But by doing what it's doing, many have said it is not pro-free speech because it is anti-adult work. I'm using that term instead of the other four-letter term because I want to get this monetized, okay? I personally think if you are anti-anything that allows someone to express themselves in any way, shape or form, you are anti-free speech. My friend Trups LP, who I regularly co-host a stream with on my political channel, has done a video recently talking about something very similar to this when it comes to freedom of expression and speech. I'm going to link it down below as it is incredibly good. Gab is in the exhibition of stupid people because it was once a platform that championed free speech and now is anything but that. It has become Twitter for the other side of an argument. One that, quite frankly, should go the way of the dinosaurs, the dodo, and any other creature that is now extinct. I'm still surprised Twitter exists, but I'm even more surprised with all the hits that Gab gets a month that it still exists. You had a chance, Torba, to grow something into something actually amazing. You had your chance. You took the millions raised and you squandered it to stamp your foot down. There was a legitimate argument made when it came to Lolly. That one was where it started. And that was an interesting one because I'm not a fan of it. I'm really not. But if you are pro-free speech and free expression and all that, then putting your foot down on that was probably not where you should be starting the argument. If you didn't want your site to become about adult work, you need to do more to get more people interested in your site. It is not rocket science. You get millions of views, you are losing followers, but you're more active on Twitter than you are anywhere else, where you are continually tweeting hundreds of tweets a day, no less, about censorship and being okay with it when so many of us thought you had the potential to be more. Interesting. And we stood up for you, by the way. Hmm. On to the festive one, because this one's good. Well, this one shan't be long. This one amused me, I will admit. As we all do around the Christmas period, we buy our presents, we buy new decorations. We do a lot of it now online, which is slowly but surely killing those poxy high streets. I feel so much better just saying it. I'm joking, I love the high street. But if I'm going to have a choice, because I live nowhere near anything, I'm going to use Amazon. And it's funny I mention Amazon because they're in the news. What did they do, you say? Well, it wasn't what they did, but one of their third-party sellers. You see, they used the site to market some rather unique decorations. These decorations. Now, I'm wondering if any of you can place the location you see on those pictures. I'll give you a hint. It's in Poland, and it's quite famous. Anyone? Yeah, I'm sure you all got it. It's Auschwitz, because nothing reeks of jolly good feelings and Christmas more than Auschwitz. In fact, on the top of my tree, I'm going to put a Star of David. I'm kidding, I'm not. I think my sister put Santa there. I think I heard him say I feel violated. But he's there nonetheless. <laughs> uh, I was going to do a nursery rhyme of sorts for uh, Jingle Bells with this. Not doing it now. I've tried. I can't record it. This seller, as you can see from the name, has been selling these products. Now, some have, of course, been removed, but some of them still actually exist on Amazon if you look hard enough. Who do you think is to blame, really, for this? The answer should be both, but I figured I'd give you a chance to say who. As a third-party seller, your product is vetted. Somebody will have seen it and gone, 
Yes, that is a fantastic idea for Christmas. Nothing reeks of the Christmas spirit more than Auschwitz. In fact, just thinking about it makes me want my turkey roast right now. I kid you, because really what I actually want is a snowball. Mm-hmm, snowball. Delicious. Understandably, Amazon has taken a considerable amount of flack for these existing on their site, and rightly so. I don't tend to agree with guilt by association, but somebody would have had to have approved those, to an extent. Or perhaps they should have been approved through a third-party seller. As Amazon is operating with third-party seller like eBay does with some of its, or most of it, all of its, sellers, one can assume they don't have the capacity to be able to do such a thing, fully. I am intrigued to know what you think about these decorations. They are well-shaped, at least. The pictures, perhaps, a little poor taste. As with the one on Monday, I'm interested to know what you think is the stupidest thing we've covered today. Is it my old university and the beef ban? Is it the culturally appropriated, super-healthy restaurant that shut down? Or Ariel Haspel, basically. Is it Gab? More importantly, Andrew Torber for going on a Christian crusade against the adult industry while saying it's all about protecting the 11-year-olds that are around the age most start to look at adult sites. Or is it this? Please let me know in the comments below. Before we finish, there is a new video on the Moisky Live channel covering the UK general election debate between Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. Also, I will be streaming on Twitch tonight at 8.30pm GMT, so please consider joining me there it's usually quite relaxed and a bit of fun. So I hope you all have a fantastic Wednesday, and thank you all for listening.